Hey, Falcon fans, I'm Thomas Mott. Welcome into Atlanta Falcons today. They won on Sunday. That's a plus, right? We had back to back losses where the Falcons looked absolutely terrible, but they did beat the Jacksonville Jaguars. That, of course, means we need to go ahead and break down everything that happened in that game, as well as the news and rumors following that game at the same time. So, Initial reaction, thank goodness. Like, I mean, they had to win that game. If they would have lost to the Jaguars, I think everyone would have abandoned ship. And yet, they were able to go ahead and go down to Jacksonville and look good. The offense scored 21 points. The defense was great for three and a half quarters, as they tend to be. Fourth quarter, a nice drive there by Trevor Lawrence to get it within one score. But whenever they needed to get a play defensively, they had that. And it was overall a positive game. Like, listen, the Falcons needed a get-right game. The past two weeks, Dallas and then the Patriots were two of the worst performances I've seen a football team play in a very long time, let alone the Atlanta Falcons. Like, offensive Defensively, three points in eight quarters is not going to cut it. And defensively, at least from the Dallas game perspective, you give up 40 plus points. Like the defense got a little better there in the Patriots, but uh, the Patriot game. But overall, it was just horrible. It was embarrassing. And there's a reason why fans aren't filling out Mercedes-Benz Stadium because of the games we saw the past couple of weeks. Now the Falcons at least have proven back to the world, or hopefully Falcon fans, that they're not total garbage. Like they're still going to be competitive. They're still going to be able to play on offense, and that they're trending much more in the right direction. I know it's the Jaguars, and we'll talk about that. But at the same time, at least, at least they were able to go ahead and uh, get a win on Sunday, a much-needed one, and look pretty good and confident doing that. Okay, pin comments down below. Of course, ad break. Scroll down during this answer. Are you back on the Falcons hype train? If you are, type Y down below for yes. If you are not, then go ahead and go down below and type N down below for no. All right, so the first takeaway, of course, is the obvious one, the one we must mention, because a lot of people are tweeting me about how the fact that Thomas, the Jaguars aren't that great. I know the Jaguars aren't that great, which is why Atlanta had to beat the Jaguars. Like, there was no room for the Atlanta Falcons to go to Jacksonville and score less than 14 points and lose. Like, if they would have literally lost that game, then it's all done. Like, you literally abandon ship, you throw in the towel, you tank the rest of the way, and you get ready for the 2022 NFL Draft. Because you can't beat the Jaguars, who are a two-win football team. I know they had the nice win against the, or the nice loss to the Bills, but still, maybe they beat the Bills. Either way, that Bills game was impressive. Other than that, they are completely devoid of talent. Like, Atlanta doesn't have a lot of talent. The Jaguars definitely do not have a lot of talent. You had no room to beat them. So you must at least give credit where credit is due that the Falcons were able to get their fifth win of the year. Like, they've won five games despite the fact they have very few talented players on both the offensive and defensive side of the football. It's like Grady, A.J. Terrell, Cordero Patterson, and Matt Ryan. That's basically it right now, and they've gotten to five wins. And so you can only play who's in front of you. The Jaguars were in front of the Falcons. They beat the Jaguars, and so that is a positive, and we must at least acknowledge that uh, overall for Atlanta. Okay, before we go into Cordell Patterson's big day, we have some crazy uh, Cyber Monday deals that are going on right now for all your Falcon gear needs, including this Falcon zip-up. I mean, this thing looks absolutely fantastic. The red, it right now, can be found at chatsports.com forward slash Falcon zip, and then use the promo code uh, Monday to get 20% off your order. Reduce that price even more. Pick it up for that special someone in your life, or get it for yourself. I always get myself a Christmas gift. I ordered a couple of uh, clothing pieces a couple of days ago. It's my Christmas gift to myself, and so you guys can jump in on that right now at chatsports.com for slash Falcon Zip, and that promo code is Monday for 20% off your order. All right, Cordell Patterson uh, came back from the ankle injury. Looked fantastic. He's the best Falcon weapon that's on the field right now. It's not Kyle Pitts. It's not, you know, any of the running backs. It's it's Cordell Patterson, who both running the football and catching the football has been an absolute beast, and he seems to be the real key in the Falcons' offense. I mean, the guy had 108 yards rushing yesterday, two touchdowns, 6.8 yards per rush, a couple of catches out of the backfield. He's just so dynamic and so great and very clearly loves to be in the city of Atlanta. Like, he needs to have his deal re-upped. He needs to be here for the long term. Like, it'd be so nice to have a wide receiver alongside of him, Calvin Ridley, but right now, the best that we have is Cordell Patterson. You got to keep feeding him. And credit to Arthur Smith for at least focusing in on the best part of this offense in Patterson and getting him the football. I mean, literally, they are really doing a good job of getting Patterson the football. And it shows in wins like today or wins like yesterday, where he's able to get over 100 yards rushing and just contribute almost every single time he catches the football in his hands. I've been pleasantly surprised by him. You guys remember, I did not think he was going to be that great. He's been way better, exceeded expectations. Huge fan uh, of that. Great, the Falcons win overall. How do you guys feel about the Falcons just getting a dub in general? It's been a while, you know, three weeks. A, B, C, D, or F, give me a grade on the Falcons win down below right now. Okay, we must acknowledge something that we usually rip, is that the offensive line might have had their best performance of the year. And we ripped the offensive line, I mean, literally every single week here, especially the past two weeks. Kayla McGarry in the O-line, Matthew Judon uh, of the Patriots, they just abused Matt Ryan and gave him no pressure, or a lot of pressure, and no time to throw the football. And yet yesterday, this offensive line group had its best game. Now, were they perfect? No. Matt Ryan still had to run a little bit, but they created incredible holes in the running lane and in the running game through running lanes. They've not done that at all this year. And Caleb McGarry, for instance, had himself a pretty decent game. Like, there was a couple of times where he got beat 
But Josh Allen was a game record for the Bill or for the uh, uh, the Jaguars against the Bills a couple of weeks ago, and Josh Allen had a very quiet day. Like overall, credit where credit is due, the O line kind of got punched around the past couple of weeks. They kind of put their big boy pants on and played a very very good football game um, on Sunday. And so we got to give credit to McGarry and them. Huge thumbs up. Massive massive fan of that. And you see the results. The Falcons actually win a football game. All right, before we go get ahead and get into my next takeaway, make sure you guys are subscribed to the channel. Still approaching 4K subs. We're so close. We're like literally a couple, 50 away from getting to 4K subs. You guys like, like the channel, like our mailbag videos, our breakdowns, our news, our rumors. Go ahead and go down below and hit that subscribe button. It's free. and get you guys all the latest Falcon news and rumors for your subscription box here on YouTube. So hit the red button. Hit the notification bell. Help me out. I appreciate it. All right, Dean Pease um, is, is incredible. I mean, he is making... Magic out of nothing on that defense, like at all. Like, like, like Dean Pease has the defense playing well, then playing well enough to win. Like, you go back the past couple of weeks, they had a really good game against the Saints until the fourth quarter. They had a bad game against the uh, Cowboys, a pretty good game against the Patriots. Like, it was Matt Ryan and the offensive play that ruined that game for them. I mean, they could have beaten the Patriots on their defensive performance alone. And then yesterday, 14 points, really it was seven points until later on in the fourth quarter when they went on a little run there. But with very little talent around him, with very few star players, truly just two A.J. Terrell and Grady Jr. Dean Pease has this defense playing better uh, more often than not. They're not perfect. And they're not close to being a top 10 unit, but they at least are a bend but don't break that can get you stops when necessary and honestly could, you know, move this team forward into a playoff spot. Like if both the offense and defense play like they did yesterday, they can keep winning football games. It's whenever the defense has a bad day, like the Cowboys, or the offense has a bad day, like it's the Patriots, that's when the wheels kind of rattle off of the train. But overall, I think Dean Pease, who was one of those kind of quiet hires that we weren't really sure if he's going to be good or not because he knew he didn't have a very good, talented defense, he's done a really good job, and I want to give credit to Dean Pease for what he did yesterday, even though it is the Jaguars, which, again, I understand. All right, final takeaway here. We always look at the playoff picture. Um, don't look now. I mean, two after two back-to-back -back losses, the Falcons are only one game back in the seventh seed. Like, things fell very, very well for them going forward. The 49ers won, but you're going to play the 49ers later on in the year. We'll show you that in a second. Seattle, uh, sorry, the Vikings lost yesterday. The Falcons, of course, that's them. They won. They bumped up. Philadelphia lost. And the Panthers lost. And these are all teams you needed to lose for the Falcons to continue to climb up there for potentially being in, should be the seventh seed. And they are... They are they're right there in it. And honestly, the next couple of weeks, if they're able to go 4-1, and one, they're going to be a, a playoff team. Now, 4-1 and one is difficult to do. It's not necessarily guaranteed. But they have enough games over the next five weeks to where if they go 4-1 and one, or really 4-2, and two, they might have a real chance of making the postseason because right around nine wins is going to do it. So, wow, Buck 6 ne next week is going to be tough. Probably not going to win that game. We understand that. But you have the Panthers. That's a winnable football game. Camden was benched yesterday. He was terrible. 49ers going to be a really tough battle. That's when you need to win because they're battling right now for the seventh seed. They beat uh the Vikings last week or on Sunday the Lions are no good the Bills of course come into the town or you go to the, Bu the Buffalo Bills in January and then you finish up against the Saints like the Atlanta Falcons are still alive for the postseason and Matt Ryan spoke about it in his postgame press conference he's just excited the fact that the Falcons are, are are relevant in December as they will be as we approach December here uh on November 29th okay do you guys think the Falcons will make the postseason like, like in, in your heart of heart, do you think Atlanta will be there as the seventh seed? If you think they will, let me know uh, down below in the comment section. If they won't, let me know down below right now in the comment section. All right, ultimate day on our Atlanta Falcons news and rumor video as we, of course, wanted to break down everything that happened yesterday. They got to win. I mean, it's Jacksonville Jaguars, and they might look bad next week against the uh, the uh, Bucks. We'll cover that when it happens. Like, right now, Falcons are playing good football, and so credit to them for at least getting a win on Sunday. It can always be better, but with the little lack of talent that they have, any win is a positive in my books. Make sure you guys are subscribed to the channel. We would appreciate you guys to go ahead and, uh, you know, be a part of, the, hopefully, a fast-growing and great community here on Atlanta Falcons today. If you guys appreciate what we do go down below and hit that subscribe button. I would greatly appreciate it. All right, ultimate day on our Atlanta Falcons news and video. I'm your toast, Thomas Mott, starting off to the rest of your day.